Well, hello, and welcome back to another edition of Ghost Stories Told from the South. I am your host, Stephen Lebooth. <laughs> I'll try not to scare you tonight. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Sorry if I got that, this one out a little late, but I'm glad you're here. But, like I said, this is a Ghost Stories Told from the South. I'm your host, Stephen Labooth. I got some good stuff. I'm gonna cover uh, the lighthouses in Maine this time. Last light, the last lighthouses I did was the top uh, ten in the U.S. And these are the top ten in uh, uh, Maine. Are the top ones in Maine? I'll probably go to another to another state uh, on the next episode. Well, the next episode, I'm going to be doing something about Thanksgiving since it'll be uh, the day before Thanksgiving when this comes out. But sorry, I'm a little late today, guys. It's uh, it's just been a rough week. I've been in a funk. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, though. I've got through it. I've got the inspiration. I don't like doing a show if I don't feel all right. If I don't feel into it, I don't want to do it because if I do it and force myself to, then it's going to come out on the show and it's going to be like, blah, blah. So I try to make it a little entertaining for you guys. And I want to say shout out to everybody who keeps making our numbers grow and everything. So I love you, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks to everybody in every country. I'll finish that up on towards the end, but I want to give a quick shout out to everybody who listens and who the old faithful is. <clears throat> Okay, like I said, we're going to go over main lighthouses. The first one we're going to go over is the Wood Island Lighthouse. The Wood the Woodland Lighthouse has the oh, has its fair share of reported supernatural activities. In the uh a the ghost hunters they went there and did the lighthouse and it was featured in that show and it all began in 1896 when howard hobbs a tenant of uh, wood island was confronted by his landlord frank mclean mclean told hobbs that the rent was overdue and that he would that is okay i screwed that all up and i'm sorry he told him that the rent was overdue, and that is when the uh, tragedy unfolded. To this day, it is said that if you stand quietly, you can still hear the footsteps of McLean and Hobbs. Pretty creepy. But I got some more on it. Let's see how deep and dive this one goes. The uh, Lighthouse of Woodland... Woodland Island has a very scary theories related to its hauntings. In one, the lighthouse is haunted by the ghost of a fisherman, Howard Hobbs, who shot and killed his landlord, Frank McLean, in 1896. We already know how the story goes. Uh, okay, he went to shoot him in the chest. Oh. Here's another, he went to shoot him, apparently. Uh, where, where was, did I see that? Okay, before, okay. Hobbs, of course, went to shoot McLean in the chest before he turned the gun on himself inside the uh, Woodland Lighthouse, the Wood Island Lighthouse. Following the suicide's report of moaning and unexpected shadows begin to be uh, told by the keepers living in the lighthouse. In 1972, the, the light was removed in, in neg uh, neg neglecting, the need for, uh, neglecting the need for any keepers to live within the uh, haunted light. So after 72 is when they took the light out and nobody uh, lived there anymore. It says here that you can take a visit now and you'll see the uh, 
automated light now exists, and perhaps you'll hear the you'll hear Hobbes on his own, without even a keeper to keep him company. All right, I got one more little diggy story. I mean, one more on it. Uh, this one says that the Woodland Island Lighthouse is located in Sasko Bay, Maine. The original lighthouse was built in 1908 at the re request of uh, President Thomas Jefferson. The lighthouse ended up in a state of uh, complete dis disrepair, calling for it to be replaced. The lighthouse that stands today is the uh, granite tower that was erected in 1839. The Wood Island Lighthouse has a tragic and violent history attached to it. And we have pretty much went over all of that, the suicides and then that one guy getting shot. And then from the records, who has either a Scafer or renting space in the area is shot and okay, we've already known that so pretty much there and Keepers who have lived in the uh, lighthouse say that unexpected shadows appear as well as uh, unusual moaning Other reports say the that sometimes locked doors fly open and gunshot gunshot gunshots are heard gunshots What's a gun shark? It's when you shoot a gun and shit your pants. Uh, well, now, what is it? You got to shoot the gun, uh, fart, sneeze at the same time. Something like that. Anyways. Uh, unexplained shadow counter. Got that. You can hear gunshots. To save the lighthouse keepers from dealing with the haunted light, in 1972, like I said, it was replaced, and now it's like a, a museum. So, that, oops, sorry, I knocked the shit out of that, and I didn't mean to, but that will cover us for the, uh, Woodland Lighthouse. I kind of like that, like, like, ugh. I can't talk tonight for shit, man, probably because I haven't had, had any, oh, because I haven't had my coffee yet. I swear, guys, I'm not drunk at all, I don't even drink. I mean, I do occasionally, but I don't do that anymore. Anyways, we are done with that one. Let's go with the Ram Island Lighthouse. Okay, the Ram Island Lighthouse. Okay, it's not this one. It's the next one. I got a little surprise for the next story. But let's go with this one. The Ram Island... Uh, Oh, the, the Ram Island ledges are a series of stone brick uh, waters on Casico Bay, Maine. The legend was the site of frequent shipwrecks as the result of steamship of a steamship wreck in February of 1900. Congress appointed funds to build the Ram Light, the Ram Island Light. Uh, lighthouse the 90 feet high granite tower is located near the entrance to Booth Bay Harbor Maine and you know why that's so cool in a quinky dinker I didn't know there was a harbor in Maine named after me because my last name is Booth you know kind of a cool Booth Bay Harbor <laughs> I'm just kidding I probably ain't even kin to him Anyways, uh, in Maine, and it went into operation in 1905. The region has a long history of warning and uh, assisting uh, mariners, mariners, even before the lighthouse was finally constructed. One account from a sailor tells how his boat was being tossed about. Lightning turned the lightning turned the day to night. And they're standing on the uh, reef of Ram Island, wearing a wearing her hands and warning. Oh, waving her hands and she was uh, waving her hands and uh, trying to yell at them at the ledge to get their attention. He said he was uh, he was never able to find the lady. Another fisherman 
said I was in a dangerous, I was in, in danger of running into the rocks when I saw a burning boat near shore about to smash on the rocks and in the uh, boat was the this woman warning me away. I quickly changed directions. The next day I saw no trace of a burning boat or the mystery woman. The light is now a private is Oh, the light is now private property and was sold in 2010 to Dr. Jeffrey Philman. Oh, man, could you imagine buying an old lighthouse? That'd be fucking cool. The ghost of a young woman dressed in white walks along the shores of the beach near Hendricks Head Lighthouse, Southport, Maine. Another lady in white. <coughs> Uh, is she the ghost of the woman who is found drowned there one morning, or is it the mother of a shipwrecked baby? In 1871, a vessel went aground on the ledge about a half a mile offshore during a March gale. That's like a big high windstorm, I believe. The keeper had no way of getting out there, so he watched helplessly as the ship went under. Some of the uh, debris washed among the shore, ashore, and the uh, keeper and his wife went to pick through it. The keeper spotted what looked like two feather mattresses bound together with rope. He called his wife over, and they found in it, in in the uh, rope and the mattress, they found a, a wooden box wedged inside, which was. Uh, the makings of a strange noise and they opened it and they found a little baby infant girl in there a little baby so she was wrapped up in these sheets her mom did all this to, so she would survive because yeah, think about it the kid probably would have that was her only chance good thing she did that it's pretty smart thinking on her parts uh the keeper and his wife rushed her to the house where they uh dried her warmed her, fed her, and kept her as their own. But the real mother, filled with grief and longing, may be the ghost who walks up and down the beach. What do you think? Is it her, or is it just another uh, lost soul from a shipwreck that got wrecked before the lighthouse was put up? That one was pretty good. I like that one. See what I got next for us. This one's very awesome too. Because it involves Booth Bay. Because that's where this next one will be. Uh, back in the same place. At Booth Bay. <laughs> this one's called the Hendrix Head Lighthouse. And yes, yes, yes indeed. It's in uh, Booth Bay too. What a quinky dinker. It must be a big bay. The Hendrix Head Lighthouse was erected on the western side of the Seaport Island in 1829 to guide vessels up and down the sea, the uh, Shipscot River to the uh, shipbuilding center at Wasatchassets Harbor. Mm. Excuse me. It was then rebuilt in 1875. Gerald Marr was appointed keeper of the Hendrix Head Lighthouse in 1866. As a uh, compensation to in part of... Blah, 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 blah. I'm screwing that up. He became the uh, keeper in 1886. In part for the injuries in, sustained while fighting in the uh, Civil War... This occurred quite often during this time period as a reward for services during the Civil War. During the conflict, he was wounded in... Oh, okay. He was uh, captured and put into a Confederate prison in Virginia where he was nursed back to health by a fellow prisoner and Union Army doctor named Wilcott. The honor the do the honor the doctor Gerald and his wife named their uh, next child Wilcott. 
Will Collard also became keeper at Cape Elizabeth and the uh, Chuck Olds Lighthouse. Before returning to be a keeper at Hendricks Head after his father's retirement, consensually, uh, Woolock Morrow was born, married, and passed away in the same room at Hendricks Head. Hmm. Charles Knight became the keeper of Wilcock, I mean, after Wilcock passed away in 1912. On a stormy night in 1932, their dog, Ship, kept barking as if something was wrong. The keeper let the dog out and watched it run to the shoreline as it was constantly barking. Feeling something uh, was wrong, the... uh, he rang the uh, fog bell to sound an, al- sound an alarm. Two power boats nearby heard the alarm and looked over the uh, waters for any anyone in distress. They found a couple that were adrift in a rowboat as they had lost their oars heading out into the open sea. The couple was rescued a few months later. Ship was awarded a bronze medal by the anti Viva, Viva, Viva Section Society of New York for his heroic duties. <clears throat> it was built in 1829 and then rebuilt in 1875. Hendricks Head is probably the best known for its two sen- uh, sensational stories that occurred there. A famous rescue of a baby girl and a lady ghost. This is seen at dusk near the shore by the beacon. And then the first, uh, the uh, this little part's called the uh, Miracle Rescue of Baby Girl. Okay, the first incident, which involves a famous uh, rescue of an infant, occurred in 1875 during a, Fierce March Gale when Keeper... um, Wait a minute. Huh. Well, that's crazy as hell. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, apparently the story has been dismissed and Ancestor of the Keeper believed actually was... Okay, well, this story... I'm sorry. I should have read this before I started the story. Oh, yeah, well, this is the same thing. Uh, They found a baby and uh, took it. And then... We've already heard the story about a man named Jed. And then here is a second story. Let's read this one. This is the Lady Ghost of the Dusk. Dusk, everybody. Dusk. The second the second incident involves an a woman a woman stranger in the early 1900s. Keeper Chris Knight, while heading to the post office, noticed a defiant woman walking in the opposite direction in in a small town where everyone knows another. He found that it's quite odd for a stranger to be walking alone in the dark. The postmark also had seen the woman. The next day, her body uh, weighed down with a flatter... Anyways. Her body was uh, weighted down and was found washed ashore on Hendrick's head. So basically, uh, she was found wandering. Then they found her the next morning, washed up on the shore. No one ever found out who she was, but she was given a decent burial in Southport. Some people have claimed to have seen her ghostly figure in the winter months walking in the uh, walking the desert beach where she had briefly committed suicide. She was known as the Lady Ghost of the Dusk as she has been spotted as the sun sets. Ooh. And here's another uh, 
something that happened a fierce storm in 19 in a January then on January the 9th 1978 demolished the boathouse and also destroyed the walkway to the connecting lighthouse to the fog bell in 1991 <clears throat> the present the present owners bought the lighthouse property and have and have restored all these structures of their original condition for tourists to enjoy them from a short uh, distance away so someone bought it and turned it in basically to their old little snuggle pad which is cool think you'd have enough money to buy a lighthouse wouldn't that be awesome i think that would be pretty sweet oh i'm going to my lighthouse this weekend yes i do declare okay ladies and gents let's uh tell our next story our next story is the mantisica rock light in maine of course mantisicus man uh mantanicius mantanicius rock is a dis uh disloaded isolated and outpost uh, 25 miles into the atlantic coast from rockland that gets constant battery by the New England's Atlantic Atlantic storms, marked on the marine charts since uh, men first sailed into the Gulf of Maine, Captain John Smith wrote his ship's log in 1864 <coughs> about three isles in the Rock of Man of Man Manadec. A great oh a great this uh this oh, i can't even talk tonight and i'm very sorry okay the lighthouse uh a bore was built in 1891 um oh sorry about that it was built in uh, 1827 and un uh unmanned in unmanned in 1983 which means they took the light out and all that so no one had to stay there had to stay there anymore the uh, airport beacon is now operated ele electronically from a uh, gray box in the Coast Guard station at Southwest Harbor, Maine. Well, they don't really tell a whole lot about this one. Mm, fell in love with the son of the replacement keeper married him and stayed there until oh okay uh story oh okay i guess we'll go over go over this now to be uh the story of abby bridges i guess abby bridges uh maintained the light with her father from age 14 served as keeper in emergencies as a teen Married on the rock, bored children on the rock, and buried an infant on the rock. At 17, she saved her invalid mother and three sisters from a three-week long storm which swept the uh, entire two-story keeper's house off the rock and into the sea. Also braved the storm to rescue her pet hens, just moments before waves destroyed the house. G Great Letter describes her account of these storms and stuff. And then she fell in love with the son of the replacement keeper and married him and stayed there and had a total of uh, stayed there a total of 22 years. Her infant daughter Bessie is buried on the rock, only person ever buried there. Uh, near death, she wrote a moving letter revolving her love of the lighthouse and all that. So, people say that place is pretty haunted too. They hear the regular, you know, the footsteps, the ghost, and especially to see a figure of her, they say sometimes coming down the stairs or just basically anywhere because that woman helped take care of the place. She was there for 22 damn years. Could you imagine the history? And all these lighthouses and just the stuff that's there. 
pretty scary and cool, man. Well, guys, I hate to cut it short, but that's all I got for you today. I'm glad you came by to listen to me, and I'm glad you're still listening, and I'm glad you're still downloading for me. And uh, just want to say thanks to everybody out there who listens. Don't forget, we're on Spotify, Stitcher, all that good stuff. Our YouTube channel's going. So y'all guys, uh, keep uh, keep telling everybody about us. We're doing good. Our numbers are growing, like I said. So you guys, be good. Be real now. This has been Ghost Stories Told from the South. And I am your host, Stephen LeBooth. We will see you next time. Bye.